In the case of the set, um, you arrive with a model, uh, a scale model of a scale of 1 to 25, in it with as much detail as possible. Um, I have the theory that the model you get is the set you get, so I put an awful lot of energy into the model. With props, you have to research every prop in terms of the period you're setting the show in. So if it's a rifle, you know, what rifles, what hunting rifles were used in the 1860s, whatever, and a photo if possible. So you trawl the internet again, finding photographic references for all of these props. So all of these things um, create this event, which is called, I call the Bible. Um, and this, this happens from day one. This is, you start constructing this enormous book of references and plans and everything, so that when I'm shopping for a toaster in David Jones, and the head carpenter rings me and says, we want to move this door 100 millimetres to the left, is that OK? I can take out the plan and just check that it is OK and that um, it's not actually ruining something else. So. In the workshop, a team of artisans are trained in everything from steelworks to carpentry. So with, with just getting a prop up and running and um, achieving what the designer has envisaged, we all will go to the design presentation. Um, so that's your first um, informative process basically. It starts there just kind of looking at the show overall and it is, I mean even though we just do props and we only do singular items per scene, it actually is important to kind of get an overview of the entire show so you get a feel for the show. Um, a previous scene might actually inform what purpose the prop has or the significance of the prop. Um, so yeah, you, first of all you just want a basic overview of the show to get the, the designer's aesthetic um, and then you can go from there. Probably the hardest aspect of what we do is just kind of trying to um, be one step ahead, I guess, basically. I mean, the designer has a very clear idea of what they'll want to do and how they, they want the show, but they come on to the scene with us, you know, months before rehearsal start. And yes, they've had, you know, very in-depth conversations with the director, but it's not really until the director gets into the space, he, has, um, he or she has the actors to um, start workshopping scenes with it. They, they don't know exactly what every single item, every single piece of costume, piece of set, whatever, is gonna do. And, you know, just through the, the process, the creative process, things can come up or um, there is suddenly a need for an actor to be able to pick something up that is, has until this point been fixed to the set. So it, it's just always a bit of like push and pull and and just trying to keep the options open, but at the same time, keeping the, the show and the production on schedule, basically. So for on Pearl Fishers, for this opera, we have um, the taxidermy deer heads. Um, we've also got two boar heads as well, which Rosie's working on, doing a fabulous job. Buster is working on a, a enormous um, tree. I think it's a frangipani or something. Um, so she's making that in Steel Bay, and then we'll dress that down here. Um, James is our, probably our gifted carpenter, he's sort of the carpenter of the floor, in our department anyway. Um, he's made this table, which I think you've had a look at, um, and then a lot of us have just been like starting, just starting to kind of get the books and the maps and just the paraphernalia that is on the table and arranging that. Um, there will be uh, lots of um, uh, Sri Lankan sculptures and that sort of thing. So there's a lot of like stone work and stuff to do, which is, you know, all foam, but the paint floor will do amazing things with it and you'll have no idea. It only weighs a fraction of what it should weigh. So, yeah, so it's going to be a beautiful show. It's a nice show to work on. There's lots of, um, lots of colour and there's lots of different things to work on in this one. So definitely an interesting one for us.